Then there's also the idea of, of dreams that uh, the nature of how people individually experience dreams changing if they drink when they go to bed. Some people don't dream at all because uh, they're not hitting levels. You know, the alcohol is interfering. Uh, there's a guy who wrote uh, Confessions of an English Opium Eater. And he described a lot of dreams, especially with the time dilation stuff you were talking about, where he would be trapped in these nightmares for what felt like to him centuries. Now, and that that connects to another very interesting point you were saying, too, where dreams are all self-report. I mean, people could just be making this shit up, but, um, you know, so everything we know about it is tell me what's in your head and what you remember of it. So, there's, yeah, there's so yeah. Many there's, layers. there's a couple other interesting points there. You know, one is um, that idea that, you know, eating something can influence your dreams. Sure. Mm. Um, but what they're finding out um, biologically is that you have so much, so many serotonin producing um, that you produce more serotonin in your gut than you do in your brain. Mm. And they're just, dis- you're discovering that your, your gut actually has um, meaningful ways and impacts on how your brain works. You're, they're really discovering your body is a holistic system. It's this idea of your brain being this computer that's that controls the rest of your body. It's right. kind of a false narrative. Yeah. You have <laughs> your heart, your gut, all kinds of you, your whole body works together. And, and a lot of that influences your thinking just as much as your brain influences the rest of the body. For sure. Um, but and then the philosophical end of it is when you look at the self-report of dreams and, and time dilation um, from the philosophical point, I like to ask, well, what is time, right? Time yeah. is just, uh, <laughs> it's a, a construct. Um, many physicists don't even believe that it really exists. They believe we live in a what they call a block universe where the present, the past, and the future all exist at different times, um, just spread out throughout it. And time is just the way we perceive it with the three pounds of meat that's in our head. Yeah. Um, so in, if you think about it that way, the, the idea that in a 20-minute REM cycle, you could live centuries, um, it seems strange from uh, just our sort of embedded uh, viewpoint of how we experience time in, in waking life. Um, but if you start to think about it a, a bit more abstractly and, and, and try to wrap your head around, well, what is time? We know that if you're having a good time, time moves very fast or if you're bored yeah. time moves very slow time flies that kind of so thing yeah there's some dilation there even when you're awake much to a much lesser extent um but yeah it gets you asking some of those deeper questions dreams really get you very deep into the human psyche yeah and there, there's also a very interesting phenomenon that um i i don't know if it's been discussed much i think i invented it but i'm sure it's a, a concurrent thought that others have had but the idea of time your perception of time being a function of your age. So one year to a 10 year old is one tenth of his life. One year to a hundred year old, one one hundredth of his life. So time seems to go faster as we get older, as a, as a function of how long we've already been alive and how much time we've existed in general. Um, so that's, that's one, one way of looking at, you know, time being a subjective experience, even if it is an objective phenomenon, if we can prove that. Um, the second point though was, uh, so, an idea occurred to me just now, and that's why I love these conversations too, but the, the, the basic premise of the experience of time in dreams. And so if it goes down to some, some levels of my personal understanding of it from, from, from my own research and reading other people's work. So there's a basic idea, theoretical that, you know, we, we dream the entire night, our brain never stops turning like the heart beats and the lungs breathe, but we don't always have a memory of every single thought. We don't have one eight hour dream that lasts the entire night as if we had never fallen asleep. We get, we fade in and out of them. So there's a kind of a liminal zone ish where it's not, we're not awake, but we're not so deeply asleep that we can't perceive ourselves thinking. And only, it seems to be only those experiences of perceiving our own subconscious thoughts that we call dreaming. So, okay. Now how does this relate? This is actually coming back to what you said. That's all the, the wait, let me begin at the beginning and then, and then catch up. Um, so when you started describing the idea of being on say Trazodone, I compared it to the guy who was on, uh, the opium. Um, there may be a longer period of time. Like your body may be struggling to awake or heading towards awakeness. And the, 
substance is keeping you just under waking up where you're where you actually spend longer time in dreamland in, in that in that space where you are consciously aware of your thoughts and i think a lot of people go you know um what is it a a, a tremendous number of thoughts can tumble over each other in a five second span in a 10 second span you can take a 90 second cat nap and have a whole little fantasy dream adventure in your head and whoa come back come back awake so imagine you know you know if we had a standard for it you know but uh one minute of dreaming is one day in dreamland the longer you're in that zone of i'm remembering what i'm thinking uh from uh, you know uh the longer it's going to seem uh, so we could we could have those kind of perceptions of oh this is taking forever I've been here my an entire lifetime that's not an un, uh, unknown experience.